exciting stuff going on. Uh, <laughs> so we will start. Um, so I know that um, Better Call Saul is coming on, uh, premiering on April 18th. Yes. Already. Uh, what do you usually do on premiere day? Premiere day, I'm just going to, like everyone else, I'm just going to watch the show from home. But yeah. the cool thing, the cool perk that we get, and you know this, is that we get to go to a premiere before the show uh, starts, like a premiere, like a red carpet thingy. So, and we get to see uh, one or two episodes of the show. So, and we get oh. to see everyone there, you know, it's, it's cool. Where is the premiere this year? If I tell you, <laughs> I gotta kill you. No, I'm just playing. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna be here in LA. Uh, it's going to be here in LA. And I think, I'm not sure if they, last year, uh, two years ago, they had another one in New Mexico as well. Oh. And then one in LA. But the one right now, all I know is there's one here in LA. We're going to that one in a couple of weeks. So, yeah. Oh, so exciting. So exciting. Yeah. And then you're just going to hang out on the couch and watch it when it's on TV. J hey, J yeah, just all like right. that. That's what, that's what I used to do when Breaking Bad, you know, the, the, the cool thing, you know, after Breaking Bad, when we died, I remember I used to, I was a big fan of the show. So like everyone else, you know, I hated it because it was a whole week that you have to wait for that show on Sunday or Monday, whatever. And so, you know, the commercials and all that stuff, it's the only show I think I've ever watched that I did not record. Most of the time I record a show and I skipped the commercials. That show, I waited to the day, I sat down and commercials were on and I was digesting. I was like, wow, that just happened. Holy crap. And it was back on and I was like, okay, go. Commercials again, <laughs> let me think about that. You know? It, it, it <laughs> but yeah, I'm just gonna be it. sitting on the couch. Very watching. nice. <laughs> so, so cool. Um, so what about now, um, I guess something that I've always wondered because now that you and I have had this rapport back and forth and like even watching you right now is just like this like surreal thing because you're absolutely terrifying. <laughs> you are so scary. <laughs> the show, I, like every time you're on, on screen, I'm like, oh no, 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 not the, not the Salamanca twins. I can't handle it. <laughs> you so know, how do you I, tap, I, how do you tap no, into the, that? You know what, really, I don't, I don't know. It just, that's, I guess, the way we are when we're serious, Danny and I, you know, because we don't need to, like, let's say before the scene, whatever scene we're doing, right? Danny and I are probably over there talking to somebody like you and I are talking right now, and we're okay. just talking and, hey, whoa, 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 hey, get ready. Oh, okay. And just like that, it's just like that. It was just, I don't know. But then we are like this, you know, we're talkative and like this, and then the moment comes and it's like, it's, you know, it's very easy to do that one, you know? There's been a couple you... of things, you know, when we were shooting a couple of episodes, they say, hey, we want you to, with your eyes, say this or that. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right, <laughs> then. Off, you know? <laughs> but it's, yeah, it is. I mean, I, I saw, I saw it right now. now. You just like went into it. Like you just, yeah, it's just you just drop. You know what I tell people? They ask me, how do you look so mean? And I said, well, you know, a, a tip, I don't know, if for me it works, is to look dead in the eyes and, and they just go like that and drop and drop your head a little bit to mm -hmm. look up. It makes you look meaner. So you just oh. dead, don't have any feeling here. Maybe a little bit like of hate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just drop your head. And when you're looking up, you want to, it looks like, yeah, like that. So you see what I'm saying? Ooh, that's it. <laughs> I'm going to work on this. Yeah. I'm tired of people. <laughs> no one's going to mess with me anymore. Just look I'm... at them serious and drop your head a little bit. And be dead in the eyes. Have no feeling dead. Mm -hmm. You're see. you're looking through them. You look at their, you know, kind of like looking at their soul. You mm -hmm. drop, you're dead in the eye. You look. Sure. Boom. That's it. <laughs> You're cartel now. <laughs> You're it's ready official. for the cartel. <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, something that I can't imagine because of Better Call Saul being this prequel, we know where you end up. You know, we have this, you know, yeah. 
And so knowing that, you know, with the show now being the series uh, finale, what was it like on the last day of filming for you? Uh, the last day, I think it was just like the other days. Oh, let me, I'm sorry that I just go with the light. You know, this season being the last, remember, with this crew of Better Call Saul was, I want to say, 50% the crew of Breaking Bad 12, 13 years ago when we shot it. It was the same crew. A lot of new faces, but it was a lot of old faces. So we had good friends on the crew. Okay, so that was one thing. And so the last season, not even the last day, it was weird. It was so weird because it was last year, you know, when we finished uh, uh, filming. And, and the COVID thing was just, it was just so weird shooting because we felt like we were aliens on the show that we know everybody. Before we even film one scene, we have to go hug everybody, say hello to everybody. Yeah. Hey, how's everything? And, you know, we, we're talking. We're like, hey, hey. Yeah. And this time we couldn't, and they couldn't talk to us. They could talk to us at six feet or 10 feet away. Everybody wearing a mask. A lot of people that were not on, on camera, they had to wear shields if they came close to us. And when we were not shooting a scene, Danny and I, and for that, if every other actor on the show, we had to sit down under, you know, the little chairs, the, the, the actor to whatever, the director uh -huh. chairs thing, we sat on them and they had glass barriers around them and nobody can come on the side on the, they can talk six feet away from the glass barrier we're sitting there so you almost felt like an alien you know like you like we were sick <laughs> but it, i understand but it was just so weird because oh, everybody was wearing a mask a shield they couldn't come close to us they couldn't say hi. so it was just so weird to shoot yeah. it was kind of it was kind of sad you know because we really did not get those goodbyes that we usually get you know when we do things it was weird it was like all right well martini last shot of the day let's do it da, da, da. okay that's all right and they you know they give a little speech and louis danny hey! and everybody yeah. applaud no hugs no nothing <laughs> it was just like yeah bye from far away you know what i'm saying i was like <laughs> it, it was sad it was weird but but it was fun at the same time you know everything was the same the directors are cool. Gordon, man, Gordon is the man. Uh, the, the, it, it was cool. It was a, it was a good experience being the last. Uh, but yeah, it was sad. The goodbyes yeah. and not dealing with the people and not talking to them. That was weird. Was mm. <laughs> yeah, and especially because it's already an emotional uh, thing yeah. that it's ending, and then you guys are separated and just kind of like you said, like aliens. <laughs> yeah. like even you know previous seasons of better call Saul, we worked on season five season four three. it was cool you know we talked to them we say goodbye but we know we're coming back next year you know what i'm saying so this is one of those goodbyes and even those goodbyes it's like a whole year before we see each other again on the show so we you know we would say goodbye see you next yeah. we'll and we talked to a lot of the guys and a lot of people there but this time everyone knew that this is the this is the end this is the last time we do this on the Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul room. This is it. This is the end. There is no more of that. Right. So it, it was sad. Everybody knew oh, this was the end. So it, it, it was it was even more sad, you know, yeah. <laughs> for that reason. Yeah. Definitely. What about now, um, because you've been a part of this for so long, do you have a favorite moment that you've had on set? Uh, better call Saul or Breaking Bad. Either one, yeah. Either part of this uh, this whole journey for you. I think from from Better Call Saul, my favorite one of my favorite moments was the shootout scene that I had on on season four, episode four. <laughs> that was cool. Oh my gosh, because it made me feel like Superman when I walked in there. And I, was like, <laughs> bah, bah, bah. I was like, whoa! And then for Breaking Bad was the explosion that we did on the first episode that Danny and I, the first episode we ever worked on, which uh, Brian Cranston directed, that was one of my favorites just because of, well, being there, but the, the cool thing was Brian, you know, how happy he was after we did that explosion thing and the way he wanted it with no moving, no flinching, no nothing, just walking like we're walking down the park. 
So that was really cool because that you know that was the thing that kind of like broke the ice kind of thing, you know, because we yeah. were the new guys that came on the show that were gonna be there for a while on that season. And so yeah, after we did that scene, oh man, everybody was just like all right. All right. It's almost like we passed our test. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we, yeah. oh, you guys fucking, you guys did that, <laughs> and it was just cool. After that, it was that's when all the laughs and all the everything came because we all became friends. You know? Yeah. It, it was yeah. really cool. But yeah, those like were family, moments. right? I mean, they became uh, in this yeah. season. I wanted to tell you. No, the, I cannot tell you what my favorite moment of the season is because then I'll be spoiling it. No, I know. <laughs> there is a hey, there is there. Oh man, there, ooh, there is. There's moments. I cannot even tell you. <laughs> I'm te- hey, your jaw is gonna be like. <laughs> yes. <gasps> <laughs> Am I not gonna sleep for weeks? <laughs> oh, it's it's gonna be something special. Man. It's, oh, it, it was yeah, it was good. <laughs> my heart is racing right now. Like, oh, oh, yeah, you, I ooh, I'm telling you, you're, you, you know, this season the way I read the script, you know, I always thought that Breaking Bad. You know, the people always say, which is your favorite, Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad? Mm-hmm. Well, Breaking Bad is Breaking Bad. That's the reason why we're still doing this. So you have to think that Breaking Bad is the the show. You know what I'm saying? But Better Call Saul is equally as I mean, it's freaking good. But Better Breaking Bad is just Breaking Bad, right? Yeah, yeah. But this season, I thought, holy crap! This episode, there's a few episodes in this season that you're like, man, this is gonna. Not, after this season airs, now right. people can compare. You know, when it's over, and be like, okay, which one do you think? Because this season, it's it's Last season was this. This season is like right here. You're like, holy. Yeah. And, and I was just reading this stuff. I haven't seen the final, but yeah. I read it and I'm thinking, this would just make, write a book and let the people read the freaking scenes because that's freaking awesome. The way you get in it, if you read it, it's like you read it again because you're like, oh, no. Yeah. You're like, but just put the, the piece of paper on the screen and have people read it and that's all you need. You don't even need to yeah. teach it. You don't even need to shoot it. Just put it on. And people are going to be like, well, that was amazing. Because their heads are going to be turned, doing their own shit. It, 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 it's that good. I, I just think this, this is going to be the best season. Best season. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Ooh, okay. I'm freaking, out. Relax. I'm freaking Relax. out. I'm freaking out. Oh, my gosh. No, I got to calm down myself. I know. All I've had I need a little paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <Stop. laughs> Oh, oh, that's so exciting. So do they give you the um, scripts like in advance or is it by like a, a weekly basis so that you don't really know what's happening? I know that some shows will do that. Oh, this show is probably the most secret show I have ever, ever worked on. Mm-hmm. Now, they give you the script, what you're going to do. They don't give you the whole script. Oh. The only way you get to read the whole script is online. You cannot download it. You cannot get a hard copy. You have to log in for one device, read it. And and if you close the thing, it goes away. You have to get another passcode to do it again. You cannot take screenshots. You cannot save it. You cannot do anything. It's like ninjas, you know, it's like, uh, there was a thing I forgot what it was that you cannot take screenshots because they on the screenshot it's just a blank uh, picture. Because uh-huh. I, I tried that, I, I was trying to yeah. read it and yeah. I was gonna fly. I was gonna fly. So I said I'm not gonna have internet, so I want to take a few screenshots of what we're gonna do. I took the first one and it was just a blank picture. I was like, oh my god, these people are ninjas. That's they don't really don't want it. Yeah. And when we got to the set. The only pages that we get is the pages that we're working, which would be four or five, six pages, and that's it. Oh yeah, gosh. but it, it's always been like that. It's always been very secretive. It, it's just, it's always been like that. Like the when we started um, Better Call Saul, the, on the second season of Better Call Saul, the first time we've been in appearance with Danny, I remember they put us in the... <laughs> They, they, you know, the, the, the secrecy thing was a thing. So they put us on different planes from LA to New Mexico. They booked us in different hotels. <laughs> Uh, they did not use our names. I was like, what the heck? What is going on here, man? What? I mean, all we got to do is just put a little hat on and they won't see the ugly ball f- head. And nobody's yeah. going to know. Nobody's like expecting us to go to New Mexico. And who's yeah. going to know when we're going anyway? You know, but they were like, no, we cannot take We We don't want no one to know you guys are here. I was like, all right, all right. 
<laughs> hey, hey, they're they're very they take it serious. Well, but and it that's works. Why hey. Yeah, I was gonna say that's why it's the number but one they show. Do, they, hey, the little things are the mm-hmm. ones that make the make a difference. You know, if not, it would just be a regular show like every other show. Oh, it's pretty good, yeah. but it's not like oh my gosh. Right, right. <laughs> like, like, hey, what was good. that moment like when they said because there was that transition? I I feel like as a viewer, there was that transition of you know, oh, Breaking Bad is over. Like that's, that was such a good show. It's over. And then you're invited back to another show. What was that moment like? <laughs> that, hey, you know what? Breaking Bad was sad when we, when we ended the run because uh-huh. see when we got hired to do Breaking Bad, we knew we were going to die. As soon as we got hired, they told us how many episodes we were doing. They did not tell us when in the season, what episode was going to be, what we we're going to, but we knew. So when the day came that we were going to die, I remember Michelle McLaurin, she was a producer and director for the show that I died, for the episode that I died on. But I remember Michelle, she's a producer. She's got to come break it down. When an actor dies that has had a run or is a series, whatever, they have to come talk to you, you know, about it. Like, you know, kind of, hey, you know, sorry, we're going to have to. <laughs> so she comes to the trailer. And, and I knew, remember, I, since I, I, the day I got hired, they told me, even when I auditioned, I knew how many episodes it was going to be. And so she comes to the trailer. By this, we were all now, we were friends. We were we're hanging out for three months. We, we were all friends on the show. And, and we, had, I don't know, people took a very cool liking to us for our characters mm-hmm. being there not that long. It was very, very cool. And so she comes into the trailer and she comes with a sad face, not the regular Michelle McLaurin. She's very happy, very good. And she comes and says, um, Lewis, Danny, I, you know, I, I don't know how to, it's just so, and I said, Michelle, are we going to die on this? Because we already knew, and now y'all can see she's uncomfortable to tell us. And so I said, is this the day? And she's like, yes, I'm so sorry. And I said, it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Oh. It, and I said, is it going to be cool? And she was like, oh, then I started, I, she knew that I was cool. Now I know, right? It's cool. I'm not. You know, I yeah. know it was going to happen, but I was like, is it going to be cool? Are we going to go in a blaze of fury? And she said, okay, now you're talking. It's going to be amazing. And then she started describing what it was going to be. But that, that's how that happened. That was kind of sad when it happened. Blah, blah, blah. And so we finished. We left. We, we took off. I remember Brian gave a speech. And a lot of people gave us when, when we were done with Breaking Bad. It was very, very cool. A very cool send off to us. And it, it was just cool, cool, cool. Now, years later, when Breaking Bad is over, we heard talks about it, but we were not sure. But in our minds, we were thinking, wouldn't it be great? Because remember, Breaking Bad was not Breaking Bad when uh, season two. Season two was great. It was a cool known show. There was a little hype in there. But the, the Breaking Bad freaking thing that happened the, was when Brian won an Emmy and the show won an Emmy for best show. And then Ed, mm-hmm. Ryan proceeded to go and win three more Emmys for best mm-hmm. actor on the show. So the show was like, right, and then right. Netflix having it, it just kept, after it was over, it kept growing and growing and growing. Mm-hmm. You know, so we were like, you know, I, you know, we had a feeling, we heard some time, but nobody was saying anything. And then Better Call Saul was announced and we were like, oh, Danny and I remember Danny called me and we we're talking and we we're saying, okay, thinking, okay, so this is a prequel. Okay, we died on Breaking Bad, this is a prequel. So we're like, but the cartel, you know, how are they going to bring us back? And we were thinking of the first time that we were on Breaking Bad, how we were crawling, came from Mexico. And we're thinking, well, there has to be a connection. We, and then we, we, we were just talking and said, okay, we did not know that Giancarlo Esposito was going to be on Better Call Saul. We did not know that Mark Morgolis, the little guy with the bell, was going to be on the show. No one knew anything. We thought it was just going to be... Uh, uh, Saul Goodman or Jimmy McGill and yeah. you know his story and we're thinking well we, maybe we're not going to be in it because we never really dealt with Saul Goodman on Breaking Bad so we it's obvious that we don't know him like that right. when he refers to the cartel he said I know a guy who knows a guy you understand who knows a guy like he didn't know he did yeah. not know oh, yeah. Yeah. so we kept thinking okay the only way we're going to be on this show is if they bring Giancarlo Esposito that's the only thing. The only, that's the only, and it's, and then we will keep going. If they bring Giancarlo Esposito or Gus, then they have to bring Uncle Hector, the guy with the bell. Yeah, so yeah. Uncle Hector comes. So we were already writing our own show in our minds, you know. <laughs> and the sad thing is this: 
now we know they're filming. It was announced, and then a couple months later, it's shooting, and then we're like, hmm, no one called us yet. <laughs> we, we're like, hmm, anytime they want to call us, we're here, you know? Yeah. First season ends, and they did not call us because we were not in the first season. Duco, Duco was in the first season. Duco, yeah. Yeah, so we were kind of like, eh. Whatever, but I'll still I'll still watch it. Yeah, you're saying yeah. <laughs> so the next season, then the next season when 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 the next season was announced, and then we got the call ahead of time too, a few months before. So we were like, yes, <laughs> you know, it was awesome. You know, it, it was a beautiful thing. I did not know it was gonna be the way it was, but as soon as we got there to the new set or, or better call Saul set, and we see at the time the first the second season we worked on it was about 75 percent of the crew that we worked on breaking bad was there so uh, everyone we knew was there it was like a it was like a party like a family reunion you know it was yeah. amazing it was so 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 cool you know it was like and the, the, the two episodes and the first episode we did a good friend was the dp the director of photography for Breaking Bad, for the whole Breaking Bad. So you know those scenes on Breaking Bad, the cool scene that, you know, people say the cinematography on Breaking Bad is amazing. Yeah. Who is this one guy? His name was Michael Slobis. He is the man behind the shots, behind the camera. He is the man. Well, now he's a director. I mean, he's a DP too, but he's a he's a very respected director. He's a he's a ninja that guy, but he is so nice. He directed our first episode of Better Call Saul. I was so excited. Really? <laughs> he's so nice. His wife is so nice. He is so nice. It's just, I'm telling you, the family so reunion it was so beautiful when we got the call. I was like, oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> that is so cool. It's because you you really do confirm that feeling. I like I said, as a viewer, it's like you kind of want to. You want to hear that, you know, that like excitement of, oh my gosh, this is coming back. And then also like that feeling of, am I coming back? Or is this like, you know, are they going to do that? Yeah. Oh, you know, another sad thing, when we were on Breaking Bad, I remember, remember, remember at this, I knew it was going to, we knew we were going to die, right? But mm -hmm. by the time the time came to die, we, we did not know that we were going to be cool friends with these people. A lot of times, you work on sets, movies, uh, TV shows, whatever, and, and you kind of go and you just do the job. You're back, you know, go back like a, like a job. You just go, it's nothing, it's just boom, 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 in and out, you're a guy, you probably never see these people again. Some you might, whatever. This job, we thought it was gonna be the same. We just go, do the job, bye, thank you, bye. No, by the time we were on episode seven, we were like, we were friends with, a lot. we still, we we're friends, good friends with a lot of the people there, you know, like the red, like crew, like the crew, some of the actors and a lot of the crew were good friends. So by the time came that we were going to die and we had a chance to uh, talk to Vince and we talked to another, a couple of producers, you know, and we kind of, I, I'm messing around, but I want to know what they say and just, hey, I'm messing around, but at the same time, I'm trying to open a door. So I go, hey, you know, to Vince, Vince. It, it, why are you going to kill us? You know, there's so much more that you can do with the cartel. You don't have to kill us right now. You know, eh, maybe next season or something. And he was like, Louis, Louis, stop. What happens every time you guys come on the screen? And I said, bad things happen. Yeah. He said, no, you guys probably, kill, most of the time you guys kill someone. So if I keep you guys a whole nother season, we're not going to have Breaking Bad anymore. Because <laughs> you guys are going to kill everybody. Do you understand? We have made it that you guys are such badasses that when you guys come on screen, it's not just going to be like, hey, we're going to play hot hands. And No, something bad is going to happen. So to keep that thing going with you guys would mean killing everybody else. So we can have that. And I was like, understood, sir. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, it was a funny me? thing, man. It was so funny. Do you get why I'm so terrified of you? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I do was you like, hear that sound? Is there a sound I hear from my end? I don't hear anything, no. Oh, good, because my heater just went on. I'm thinking, I wonder if it's too loud for you. I can turn it off. It's like, shh. No, 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 I don't. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> well, you've been acting for quite some time, and I, uh, you know, I was looking at your IMDb, and I'm like, gosh, how has acting changed your life? And when did you start? Man, I started in, at the end of 2002, and then boom, here we are. Mm -hmm. uh, shit, it changed my life completely, you know. Before that, I don't know if you know the story. It's uh, so there are a couple of interviews I've done before where I say, you know, back in the day, 
I, you know, I was not a, a saint, I want to say. I was not like, oh, my God, this guy's a freaking animal or a horrible person. But, you know, I had my little my little run run ins with the law, <laughs> let's say. And, and, you know, I went I went to prison, you know, for, mm-hmm. for a while there. Not for anything crazy. It was just a, a kid's little BS, I want to say. But I still went a, a couple of times. <laughs> uh, and so in 2000 yeah at the end of the uh, beginning of 2002 I actually I got a job <laughs> this is funny right so I, I just got out of prison in 2002 and then that same within months I get a job doing security <laughs> out of prison security and bodyguarding right out of prison I'm thinking <laughs> I like it that they're not checking any of my stuff right because they'll be like get out of here Okay. And so I'm, I'm on this on the movie set, right? And the guy, uh, I'm doing bodyguarding for someone, you know. And then that that's how I can started. That one day, uh, one of the actors did not show up for whatever reason, and the director just came up to me and uh, asked me to be part of a film, you know. And that's how it started. Wow. I mean, it was funnier than that, you know, because I got at the time. See, I had my neck, I had more tattoos, right? Mm-hmm. Remember, I'm out of prison and I'm doing bodyguarding security, so I was trying to like a, a, like a shirt like this. But I had it all like this, and I was wearing a hat, and I had the long sleeve, long sleeve, oh, like wow. covering everything. I even had a hat on because I had a hat on because I didn't want him to see my ball. I didn't want him to. I don't. I didn't want to get fired, basically, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm like this, and when the director comes, he comes from like from this side, right? And I can feel he's looking at me. He's just walking straight to me, but I'm not looking at him because I don't want to talk to him. And he comes right to me right here, and then he pull, he does like like this. He pulls my shirt like this on this side. He goes like this. And I know that he saw my, I, you can still see the tattoos, but he wanted to see more. And he goes, Whoop. and I'm like, oh, shit. In my head, it, it, it took a second. But in my head, I thought a thousand things. I, I'm fired. I'm in trouble. I'm, I, I'm thinking this is it. They're going to fire me. If they don't call the cops on me, I'm lucky. Yeah. And no, what he said is, huh. He looked and he's like, do you want to be in the movie? And I was like, you know, a little bit in shock. You're like, oh, shit. I, I wasn't expecting. I was expecting something like, what are you doing here? You freaking criminal. Get the fuck, you know? <laughs> and he said, and I'm like, uh, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> because I thought, in my mind, I said, no, thank you. Because I thought that he was asking me to do background on the show. You know how, like, ex- like doing an extra, like, background? And I'm thinking, you know, it's, it, that's not going to be great money. And it's going to be long, long hours, you know? So I said, no, thank you. You know, and he's the director. He don't give a crap. He's doing me a favor. So as soon as there's another, okay, cool. All right, have a good day. He freaking left walking and he goes walking to Video Village. As you, you probably, you know this, but a lot of people don't know that Video Village is where they have the monitors. When, when the cameras are filming, they're with the actor. And then I want to say that like uh, 30, 40, 50 f- feet away, there is a, a, a tent with monitors, chairs, that's Video Village. That's for the big kahunas, the producers, the directors, mm-hmm. the writers. They're watching live while we're shooting so they can see how it you know, looks and direct, whatever. So this guy walks to there, to where the big kahunas were at, Video Village. And me, I'm looking at this guy walking and I'm thinking, oh, crap. And then as soon as he gets there, everyone comes out. The producer, the producers, a couple of writers, and I'm, 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 I'm just like 10 people there. And I'm, I'm looking at this live and I'm like, oh my God, they're going to fire me. And even worse, when they're talking about me, they do this. And they all look at me and I'm like, I, I should just walk out of this motherfucker. I just leave. And they're looking at me. I know they're talking about me. Oh man, it was, so, it was like two seconds, but I mean, my life was, I was like, oh. And then the little guy, comes out walking out of that group and this guy comes and he knew he knows I was kind of like a street guy from you know and he he was the same I can I know I didn't really talk but I knew and he comes to me and he spoke my language remember I'm, I don't know anything about this film shit I just got out of prison right. so he comes to me and he tells me yeah hey, he even called me he said hey homie do you are you sure you don't want to be in the film look we're going to give you $500 for 30 minutes of your time. $500. And I said, what? What do I got to do? He said, just be a bodyguard like you are right now. You're going to be the bodyguard for the main actress. You're just going to, you're not going to say any, you're just going to stand there. And if she walks, you walk with her. That's it. 
30 minutes, 500. I was like, let's go. <laughs> and, and that's how it started. You know, oh that guy, gosh. he was really nice. That guy knew. I, yeah. I, we got to talking after that. I worked on that film for like a month. So I got to talking to that guy. His name is Manuel Jimenez. And, and he put me up, you know, he, 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 he showed me the ropes kind of thing, you know, what to, you know, yeah. things to do, how to behave on set, like different, you know, the actor to do things. And, and so he became my manager after that film. And then he got me an agent and he sent me to acting classes, read some books, more acting class. And then I, I kept it going throughout the years to going into acting things, you know, because you always want to learn, you want to learn. It was a new thing for me. And, and then you're like, wow, you know, you learn a lot if you do these things, you know? So, but yeah, that's how I started, you know, if it was an accident, but oh that guy, gosh. he helped me, the director have, it, things just happened. It was, at the, it was at the right place at the right time, I guess. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? Your past, and just think that tattoo is yes. what led you to this part yeah. in your life. Like, yeah. that's just amazing what, you know. Oh, it's crazy. There. No, yeah. it's crazy. I got, you know, Manuel was a big part of that, the acting thing, because aside from that, you know, in talking to him, remember, at the time, I was younger, you know, and, and I, my mentality was different, I think, than I am now. But at the same time, with Manuel got me an agent, the, the, the guy, that the, the, the little guy that came to me and, and then to, told me about the $500. He became my manager, but as a manager as well, he knew the story, you know, of the oh, my yeah. past, prison yeah. and all that. So with him, we 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 uh, he had a, a group called Suspect Entertainment, and so he took a, a few of us guys like were reform gang members or whatever the hell it was to go to schools like probation schools, oh. regular schools, camps to talk to kids about prison, drugs, and things yeah. like that. You know, what, what, what that did for you, what it will do, you know, just bad, like motivational speaking, talking to kids that are trouble, you know, that was cool. That was very, very rewarding because you see yourself, you know, how when you, you see, I don't want to be rude, but you see a, a kid that is ignorant or naive or whatever it is that he thinks that he is the man and life is just going to be freaking this whatever you want it to be no matter what you do everything's gonna no oh you're a gang member you're cool no that's not the way it is it's a big fat lie you know it's gonna take it's gonna get it's gonna get you in trouble or dead or in prison <laughs> you know so mm -hmm. but it, it, that, that was really cool you know it was, it was really really cool Mom. are you still doing that are you still talking to kids i haven't done it because the whole pandemic I last time i did it was three years ago uh but I have not done it lately, you know. But hey, that that is that's something special, you know. Oh, yeah. When the first, you know, the first time I did it, when you grew up, I grew up in LA in a very bad area, right? Let's say of LA, whatever it is. And so, when you grow up in the environment, everyone teaches you that, or you learn that the cops are the devil, the cops are the bad guys, the cops are the. That's how you grow up. You don't even know why you hate the cops, but you hate them, and you scare them. You run, and so the first time that uh, that we were assigned to go talk to kids, it was in East LA, and so we go. It was three of us, Manuel and two guys that were gonna do the talking, and we drive to East LA, and we drive straight to the sheriff department, and I'm like, it, me, I'm in shock right here because we drove voluntarily to the sheriff department's office, and I'm like, oh man, I've never been, but I've always. I, I was brought in here by force and so we go I'm a little nervous you know I'm like holy crap I, I wonder what's gonna happen here you know I wonder if we have when we walk in we're gonna have to be like hey I don't have anything you know that thing <laughs> but we parked the car and we walked to the front and there was three officers in the front drinking coffee um they were waiting for us and as soon as they see us they come up to us like normal they were just like hey they smile and they extended their hand you know to shake your hand and me i'm like what the f you know is going on and he looks into my eyes and he said mr roncada thank you so much for doing this for it means the word and i was like what the f what just happened right now he just called me mr roncada <laughs> you know not like hey put your fucking hands up that. no mr roncada <laughs> thank you. you you know so that it was it was just boom to me right i was like what the f fuck is this shit? and then we'll go we talk to the kids there was officers in the background like listening to the talk too right and so we're done we talked to the kids it went great and we're done they put they took the kids away and then the officers again they come and thank us you know like 
a thank like a thank you from here right and they brought us coffee uh, cheesy i say but they brought us donuts too <laughs> they did they brought us some donuts i'm like what the heck man but, but they did. And so where i'm going with this is that that's the moment i realized that i was wrong that all my life i thought the cops were the bad guys right and but when i talked to those guys because then we talked a little after the whole thing after the whole me being in shock and then i realized that they're just regular people doing their job and that I was wrong because when I thought about it, I thought, holy crap, the way I looked on the street, if I was a cop, I would have probably stopped myself because I looked like I was up to no good. You, you, like you yeah. look at me right now, if I remember, if I had the, the breaking bad phase all the time, you yeah. know that there is something going on, right? Well, that was me back in the day that face you know what i'm yes, saying angry. so i thought man this is crazy you know officers cops sheriffs whoever it is they're just doing their job mm -hmm. and they have no way of knowing who is gonna be what or who is gonna do what to them so they have to be on guard the whole time and guys like me don't help or the way i was it does not help because as soon as you see it, yeah they say hey they profile their race whatever no but look at the way i i understand i never got butt her because of race or racism and no i fucking knew who i was and i knew that hey man i'm i'm me i'm out there you yeah. know i hey i take it come give it to me yeah. because i know i look it so I, yeah. I was not gonna be like oh you pulled me over no i knew who i was and i knew I, i'm like no go ahead man i look like this hey i'm gonna take it because that's what goes with the territory of what i'm doing i'm being a stupid yeah. dumbass hey it's my fault you know, I realized that later. At the time, I did not think, but I took it. I never took it like, hey, I, I know I'm going to get pulled over. I'm going to get harassed, whatever. You know, but now I know all this. And I'm thinking, man, that, that's crazy. And back then, that's the first time I learned that there were just regular people doing wow. their job. And there were there were some really nice, I'm, I'm sure, you know, with everything on the news and everybody here, that there's, there's bad cops. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I was shot a long time ago by a cop. Long time ago. And that was messed up, but still, it's nothing. There is good cops like those guys that we did. We did many other. Um, uh, we went to many other places with uh, police officers and sheriffs, and and it was great, you know. And yeah. I got to talk to very good people, you know. And, and I was like, wow, that that's the moment everything changed for me, kind of thing, you know. Sure. It was cool. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. And then you mentioned, you know, because you were almost in this environment where you're raised that this is the enemy. So if you were able to even talk to kids that are raised in that same environment where their their mentality is you know avoid the cops and that they're they're bad people and they're Not, yeah. you know and so mm -hmm. you you know this experience and you're able to kind of show like no they're human just like you know yeah. human, like uh, removing that, that absolutely uh, you treat you treat them with their respect mm -hmm. you know and if you're not doing anything now if you're doing bad or you treat them with, treat them with respect they're almost gonna smell you. You're, you're full of crap. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're, but if you're not doing anything bad, and you can be a certain way, uh, let's say it's a, like my neighborhood. It was a Latin neighborhood, right? They see me. They're already gonna assume it's a it's a Hispanic gang, right? So they're gonna assume I'm a gang member until I, you know, I'm not because they don't know I look like one. How do they know I'm not? <laughs> Excuse me. And so I always say, you know, but if you're not doing anything wrong, you can look however you look. Why would you give them an attitude? Why would you give them that? You're not saying, because they don't know who you are. Who do you think you are for them to know? They're not reading your mind. They don't know. What if you have a gun? Nobody knows. So I say, if you're not doing anything wrong, be respectful. There is nothing. There is nothing. You 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 talk to some of those guys. They're great people. They're family people. You know what I'm saying? There, there is some good ones. There are some really, really good ones, you know. I'll take that. I was going to say something else, but I forgot. <laughs> well, um... So I, yeah, I know this is, I, I don't want to keep you, oh my gosh, I'm keeping you, but I would love to know what's in your future. What, what's uh, any sort of projects or anything that that's on the horizon? Oh, <laughs> Go right now. Uh, you know how you you're cool and then and then you get a little scratch and you're like, what the, what 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 just happened? You have the uh, heater future. on, though, right? <laughs> the, the heater's off already, but still, it's like weird. I don't know, but future, well because of covid things slow down too much i mean you know how it went and it's been slow since it just started picking back up 
So there has been a couple of auditions, but nothing yet. I haven't heard anything yet. I think I have a commercial audition actually today. I'm going to do that. But you know what the cool thing that we're doing and we started doing maybe two, a couple of years ago, conventions. And if you've seen, I post a lot about that because conventions are, they're cool. You go, I never knew until a couple of years ago when I, they asked me to do it. And I'm like, nah, man, who, who? Who's gonna want to see us? We're the bad guys, you know. Ain't nobody gonna want to beat us and talk to us, take pictures with us. And so this guy, no, yeah, boo, Breaking Bad, blah, 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 blah. And I said, fine, we'll go do one. And so we did the first one, which was a, a horror hound in Cincinnati. And we go there, and it's horror hound, like Freddy and, and Jason, all those guys, the scary guys, right? And we're like, we have no place being at that place, but we're gonna try it. We go there. And we sit on our table with our thing, and there's a freaking line of people. And you're like, the fuck? Are these people messed up, or are they wrong? What the fuck? They here for us? Yeah, mother. And we're, it was crazy. So then I, I saw that, and what got to me was how thankful, how nice, how they were just so nice that we were there, and that just that we were who we like. You know how we're talking right now. Like when you're talking to someone, I'm not gonna put anybody on blast, but I'm gonna say it. When you go to these conventions, can I? I'm not gonna say by word. There is a lot of a holes or people that think that they're even actors or whatever. You know how they act like their shit don't stink. They act like oh, like they're. And I'm like, I, the first time I did it, I had somebody next to me that was that. I I never knew how I was supposed to act. I'm just gonna be myself. So Danny and I we're like this. And we're like, hey, how are you? And if somebody asks you something Breaking Bad. Or a question like you and I are talking, you answer that question. You talk to them like people. You know what I'm saying? Respect, <laughs> nice, be kindness, and all that shit. This guy was an asshole. He was like looking down. Somebody, hey, nice to meet you. Thank you. The picture was this. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you. You know, it wasn't. And so, so he had a big line. He was a pretty famous guy, and he had a big ass line too. And we, Daddy and I, we probably look like fucking clowns because we're taking pictures with people. We're like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it like that. Oh, this will look funny. Let me put the axe on you. You know, you've seen our pictures we post for the, the, the cons, right? So we're doing a freaking photo shoot with everybody. And I just want with everybody, whatever they want, we'll do it. For what? Yeah. We'll do everything. And so the people on the other lines are looking at our line. They haven't even seen Breaking Bad. And so we just, now people start coming here and I get this, right? He said, hey, nice to meet you. I said, hey, well, very nice to meet you. And there's a couple of people. I mean, who's the fan? Who watched the show? And I said, we have not watched the show. We don't even know what Breaking Bad is. But you guys are just awesome. <laughs> this is a, we started from the other line. And then they started complaining. And we took a picture with that guy. He's such an ass. You know, he did this. And he was just so like, ugh, get out of here already. And you guys are throwing a party over here. We wanted to be part of the party. So we want to take a picture with you guys, too. And then, but they said, but don't get me wrong. We're gonna now go watch Breaking Bad because you guys are awesome. So you understand me? That touched yeah. me right because people were like, "You guys are so nice." And I met so many people, so thankful. I mean, it, it, it's been cool. So that we, we have a lot of conventions coming this year. We just came oh. back from Ireland two weeks ago, and it was amazing. It was beautiful. A lot of Irish fans over there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was awesome. But that, that that's we have a lot of those, and hopefully something comes soon. And this pandemic thing, it slows down a little bit so we can get back to work because, you know, <laughs> but if not, we're going to be uh, in a town near you. <laughs> yes, I know because I need to meet you. I need to give you a hug. This has been going oh, on for way too long. <laughs> hey, we're, we're going to be, we're going to be busy doing a lot of those this year. We met, uh, we, we hooked up with a guy, you know, who does, who's done a few with us? You'll be surprised. Uh, RJ. Oh, the RJ Walter yeah. Jr. Yeah, Walter Jr. Yes. So his manager, we met him through. See, this is how cool our Breaking Bad people are. Like I was saying, you how cool we are. We're friends with RJ. We've been friends since Breaking Bad, and so RJ was doing a con, and and his manager asked him because the the con asked him if he can bring someone else that would fit the the people that were gonna come to this con you know all cons have themes you know right. some could be marvel or some could be everything mm -hmm. tv or film whatever so the manager and the con asked if anyone would come that would fit this thing and he said who would be the best and rg's first word he said he didn't even hit, he asked before even i said it, he said the brothers louis they're freaking perfect and they're freaking awesome 
the brothers. Anybody else? No, no, no. Bring them. Trust me, you're gonna like this, guys. And freaking Ben, he went and saw. He said, "Wait, what the fuck? Don't you? Can we get like this? No, bring the brothers." Yeah. And it, it, he was still. Everybody was thinking, "No, nah, bro, but they, they're like mean and little, you know, and this and that and little type. Nobody, they, you know, okay, fuck, bring. We they, we came to this fucking thing, and we did the same thing we did at the other show. We worked the fucking shit, and they were just like, "What the fuck? How do you guys do this? Why are you guys so happy to be here?" I said. Well, fucking shit. These people took time of the day to come see us. What the? We uh, the least thing we could do is give them a little bit of love and give them the respect and love. You understand me? Like they fucking took time of the day to go fucking pay at the con to enter this fucking thing. Come on, man. They got in line to see us. Uh-huh. Hello, I'm just a regular fucking guy, and they're giving me that kind of love. Right, we gotta give it back. And so wow. they, oh man, then after that, we hooked up with those people and they're like, okay, we got to start working now with you guys. And I so we started it. doing it. It I happened like that. It. Like the energy and the whole thing is, hey, that's just us. You know, we got to be thankful for everything. You know, yeah, the you, people that you come. exude that. You exude yeah. love and you exude gratitude, which is something yes. that I feel is missing with so many people. It's just recognizing that graciousness of, wow this opportunity came and I'm going to give back for this because yes you're, you're that's the number one thing yes you know, sometimes yes. people either had it too good or yeah. they forgot who they are or they, where they came from you know and mm-hmm. now all of a sudden you're a little successful and you're better than other people mm-hmm. no you're yeah. the same as fucking everybody else mm-hmm. your job is just different maybe you have a cooler job but you're still the same you know, you're still the same old person. Don't don't let that shit get to your head. <laughs> you know, don't. We're all the same shit, you know? And we're lucky to be doing what we're doing. Look at how beautiful it is for Daddy and I to be part of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. We're just two dudes that got lucky getting this part. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing for us. Yeah, you know, yeah. it helped us so much. So be thankful for that. And our characters were short-lived on Breaking Bad. We were not on Breaking Bad for a long time. But our characters, and I want to say our personality, maybe I don't fucking know. like see the love we get to the people. It could be either social media, or whatever. When we met them, that took us far, you know, because we were short, we were like this. The other characters have more than us, and I can say that you know we are more memorable than they are because of oh, yeah. who we were on the show. And now that we meet people on conventions, it's even more. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just oh, one of those yeah. things. You got to be thankful for the fact. Hey. Without the fans, you ain't shit. Excuse my French, but you're not. You know, so be thankful for that too. (laughs) I love it. Love it. I I really look forward to seeing what else is in store. Um, Definitely keep me updated if there's anything at all that you need in sort of like promotion or something like that. Oh, thank Um, you so much. And yeah, yeah. And, And let me know when you're. I mean, we're we're in Southern California, so let me know if there's any sort of opportunity to come give you a hug. Uh, we just did a we did a, hey, we did the LA Comic Con like right before the pandemic. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I'll let you know for sure. Okay. I will. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I love you. Thank you so much. I will um, keep an eye you. out. But it's I, been I a fun one. You're probably thinking, shut up already. You talk a lot. For great no, time. no. Are you kidding? I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I feel like I, I've got a billion more questions, but I don't want to keep going. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Hey, we can always do another one, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we can do another one after the show airs. How about that? Yeah, yeah, let's do you it. You know what we I'm saying? We can, now we can, yeah. now, now we can now really we talk can about other check. stuff. Yes. You know? yes. Yes. yes, yes, definitely. All right. I'll contact All right. you. All right. Have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you. So you as well. Thank you for your gratitude. Oh, thank you. you. See that? The heart, the touching right there. Thank you again. Thank you. All right. Have a wonderful day. You too. Talk to you soon.